pitching hour is here, so I like to call this Monday, January 13th, 2014, meeting of the Board of County Board of Education for order, and call on our Vice Chairman, Cheryl Miller, to uh, direct us and tell the group of staff, or our students, rather, to direct us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Tonight, we are honored to have students from James Love Elementary School to lead us in the Pledge, and Stay behind me. I'm going to call their names and they're going to just walk a little bit further over. We have Jada Nivens. We have Jaquie Hamilton. Alex Burns. Kaylin Burns. And Jared Sewell. And Hannah Duncan. Okay? And they are going to lead us in the pledge. And I think that um, Alex is going to get us started tonight. Students, if you'll step, make one step out. I think you can see the flag a little better. Turn towards the flag Attention to this new pledge. Our pledge. Is. 
that or the uh, it is his characters. But it helps you. One thing that y'all did tell me was that um, you don't just play games on the computers. Is that right? Do you play games on the computers? <laughs>
I'm really hoping for Northwestern University, Boston University, or Chapel Hill, where I plan to pursue performance and history. Um, and the career goals I have, I really just want to um, keep funding the arts and getting that knowledge out there because it has truly helped me throughout my educational experience. And I really just want to make people more aware of that and also become more politically aware.
Um, at school, I am the student body president. I'm also the president of Chargers with Accolade, which Mr. Thurman started last year. And it's a program for minority scholars and crests, which are, it really only involves juniors and seniors. Um, I am a four-year Latin club member. I'm really involved in every club, and I'm a four-year varsity and basketball letter. I plan to attend Carolina, UNCG, or App State to major in physical. Trudy Petty and Timothy Jones. A school I'm involved in Glee Club, which is a singing club where we perform at graduation or different ceremonies and things that we host at Cleveland Early College. I'm also a part of event planning where we plan the prom or anything else that happens at Early College. I'm in a nonprofit Christian organization, Alpha Sigma Omega and Alpha Theta Delta. We do a lot of community service. I really enjoy that because I love working with people, which leads to my career plan. I plan to go to Winston-Salem State to major in nursing. Also, I'm fluent in American Sign Language, so I want to continue my education for the deaf community and somehow be employed at one of the facilities for Carolina's healthcare system while still being an interpreter. Thank you. Hello, my name is Joey Yip. I'm a senior at uh, Shelby High School. I'm in, involved with a lot of clubs and activities. And what's great about our school is since we're so flexible, we're able to create clubs and make people of their own interests. I'm also involved with Boy Scouts of America. And I find it was great because just be able to go out in the community and help and see how to change many lives. And hopefully, when I grow older, I'll be able to go out and be able to change more lives. Also, um, I plan to go to uh, UNC Chapel Hill to major in uh, medicine. I haven't decided what specific major, but I just thought it would be great to help people because I learned that from school and scouts. That helping people is a great thing and seeing people <coughs> strive for the best is also great. Mr. Chair, ordinarily we have our senior state until the end of the board meeting. This is exam week in the high schools, and all of these students have exams for it, and they all take challenging classes. So I'd ask for one person privilege to excuse them at this time. Sir, let's give them another big hand.
but we've gone even further to have it each, approximately each board meeting. Occasionally, there will be something that uh, precludes us from doing that, but uh, most of the time, it's, uh, each of our uh, scheduled board meetings, we take the people who want to participate, speak publicly in order of appearance uh, to our board secretary. Uh, we ask or we allow 15 minutes of each of our board up to 15 minutes for public participation. Each individual is asked to limit his or her participation to three minutes. We'll start off again with the order in which uh, you all came to our secretary, and I'll call on Joel Maxwell to come forward. If each one of you will come to the microphone, we would appreciate it. I'm here to address today uh, the issue that happened at uh, North Elementary School about a week ago about the weapon in the school. I think we need to step up to security for the schools and put metal detectors in. <clears throat> Something needs to be really looked really look at with this. I mean, it's real, our kids' safety is important. That's all I have to say. Thank you. We appreciate your comments. The board will take them under advice. Chris Weaver. speak to you tonight. My name is Chris Weaver. I stand here representing a group from the upper end of the county <clears throat> the trained students in the interest of Burns High School. I want to thank those commissioners that I contacted that contacted me back over the weekend. I emailed three board members and heard back from two. I have yet to hear anything from the third. We as a group are extremely disappointed in the situation with our football coach and him leaving Burns High School. For a laughable job at best at New Conover, it comes as a huge shock to know that his decision was 90% based on lack of administration support and the continued micromanaging ways that have taken place over the last six months. Burns is not the only one losing here. Coach worked with all ages from across this county. Uh, we are here knowing that we can't change Coach's mind and we have all wished him the best. Our concern now is moving forward and how we can hire another top quality coach without our current administration, administration causing more issues again. How can we resolve the issues that are there that will cause a coach to uproot five plus years of work and move to a job of less stature in my eyes. We are not here on witch hunts. We are here to find a solution for our children's future, to find out how this happened and ensure that it doesn't happen again. As a community, we would like to have someone explain to us the hiring process and how a veteran principal with previous ties to Burns High School offered to come out of retirement and was told by our superintendent that he wasn't on his agenda. Why the Chris job was a four and a half month search through two states and the Burns job was a two week search in our own county. How we lost a veteran principal ended up with a rookie principal with no experience as a full time principal at the top level. We would like to know why the donations to other schools are not shared with Burns. Since all donations are supposed to be distributed equally between all the schools. Confused? I was too. This is what our previous AD told us when someone tried to make a large donation to the football program. We were told that any donation made to that program would have to be divided four ways. Again, another uninformed CCS employee that doesn't know how things really work. Again, a blow to Barnes High School. We understand we don't have any allies on the school board. We have no representation from the upper end at all now. Rest assured that will change. Rest assured that this community will not stand and let this continue. And rest assured, you will not know that we are here. Last year, lastly, our kids are hurting at Burns High School. They are losing a teacher that cared, loved them, a teacher that made it more about the community than himself, a teacher that gave more of his time to the student athlete than to his own children, a teacher that taught him how to face adversity, a teacher that was like a father to a lot of them, a teacher that took his took kids into his own home that were homeless. A teacher that took kids to Muncie, Indiana on his own money to help them further their education. A teacher that loved these kids more than himself. It is again a shame that the future will never experience the compassion that Coach Beam had for them. Thank you for your time and thank you and don't forget there are kids in Lawndale. Thank you. Through your room. 
moves a little closer that the item I really want to speak about is not on your agenda. And I wanted to speak about it because it needs to be on the agenda. I'm not talking about a prayer to, to start the meeting. But it's not on the agenda. The rules say that I should, if it's not on the agenda, that you go through the proper administrative uh, 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 channels. <laughs> Put my glasses on here. But anyway, I want to do that. But there is something on the agenda that I want to talk about also. And I believe what I put on the, uh, the reason for speaking is broad enough that I uh, would cover that too. Uh, I noticed on the part of on the agenda with, with, uh, that deals with the uh, voucher litigation. Uh, the vouchers for public, for private schools that the General Assembly uh, is, is going to do appears to be a, 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 the best thing for education because if you face the facts, public schools do not equal private schools in test scores and other and other uh, attributes. I think I think the the uh, private schools in the state ought to have an opportunity, and I'm sure parents would like to send their children to where they can get their best opportunity. And I think everybody should be for that, including board members. Now, the resolution that's on the agenda tonight is uh, where each one of you folks will be asked to vote to join a lawsuit to fight the General Assembly over the constitutionality of these vouchers. I think that's the wrong thing to do for several reasons. One, the majority of the people in the state of North Carolina elected the representatives, the senators, the governors, the governor that we have, and, and uh, a lot of judges, and uh, the judges too. So the chances are you're going to lose, which is going to be a waste of money. And if you do win, the voters in, in the state of North Carolina voted for the same governor, representatives, and senators that all they have to do is sit around and amend the Constitution to allow the school voucher. So in the end, it's a useless pursuit. And I would recommend that each and every one of you board members vote against that resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Robert Queen. My name is Robert Queen. I'm a proud uh, 1985 alumni of Crest High School. And uh, to be sure I stay in the time, I'm just going to read a cover letter that I'll be submitting copies to you folks when I finish. Uh, Dr. Hammond, as you're probably aware, Many comments have been made in the past few years regarding actions taken or not taken by the Clinton County School Board. Many things have been reported in the Shelby Star. Many statements have been made during candidate forums by incumbents and challengers, and many rumors have circulated in the public. As an interested parent of CCS students and a concerned taxpayer, it's been difficult to separate fact from fiction. I started attending board meetings in August of last year in an attempt to figure out a few things on my own. While a few questions have been answered, many more questions remain. I'm submitting this letter with a list of questions that I would like to have answered by the board. Please note that I purpose, purposefully, it's a hard word to say, waited until after the elections to submit these questions. My purpose was not to influence an election, but to get to the facts for myself. I would appreciate a response by the board, uh, by the board meeting on February 10th, 2014, and please contact me at any time if there's any questions about my request. And I have copies to pass along to them.
that's all of the marks I have at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clinton. Next item on our agenda is the approval of the minutes or consideration of the minutes of the December 16th, 2013 business session. What's the pleasure of the board? We'll make a motion to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the minutes of the December 16th, 2013 business session. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes <clears throat> unanimously. On to 21st Century Professionals, our personnel report, Dr. Moore. We have the report uh, presented for you by our human resources department. Got a new book. What's the pleasure of the board? Make a motion to approve the personnel report as presented. It's been moved and seconded to approve the personnel report as uh, presented. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, on to calendar for 2014-15 and 2015-16. Ms. Wong. Good evening. I'm bringing back the two calendars that we had uh, given to you in December for consideration. Uh, just a reminder that these calendars came from a committee that was made up of teachers, parents, and administrators with representatives from every school and zone. Um, the calendars after the committee came up with them, we brought them to you in December. Um, the calendars then were placed on the web page for feedback from anyone, um, as well as we sent an email directly out to all staff where they could uh, respond to us and get feedback. Uh, the 2014-15 calendar, overwhelmingly positive feedback. Um, about 35 responses came in. Um, any requests that were made um, to make changes for that calendar were requests that we we wouldn't be able to do because of the calendar law. For example, there were some requests to start school in early August, which we could we can't do. Um, so that one, there really all of the feedback that we had was very positive. Uh, the 2015-16 calendar again, we had a lot of positive feedback. Um, I think we had 28 responses, if my count's correct. Um, a little over half of those requested that we make a change to Christmas break. On um, that one, I think Christmas break is eight days, and there was, um, would like it to be two weeks, and would like Easter to be um, go from seven days to five. So there was some discussion there. Um, again, 28 responses is not a tremendous amount of feedback. Our initial committee was 45 people. Um, However, that, that did seem to repeatedly come up um, in the feedback that we got. Um, of course, the calendar is the decision of the board. Um, you have a few options. You can approve them both. You can reject them both. Um, you can approve the 2014-15. I think I can, I can tell you that the feedback for that one was, was good. Um, and I can go back to the calendar committee if you would like for me to with the 15-16 and have us revisit. Um, the Christmas, Easter, or we can do whatever you would like for us to do. Do we have any questions for Ms. Walker, when, when your committee met before, uh, before this presentation, did the committee discuss the issue that was raised about the, the 2016 calendar and the, the Christmas and Easter break? We, we did have some discussion about both of those. Um, they seem to, on that that one, good, they really wanted to do Good Friday, and then they were considering K-Day, which would then, that's why the Easter break is so long on that one. Um, that did come up, and we considered reducing that and moving a, a day to February. We didn't discuss moving it to Christmas, which is what the feedback in this one has been. Um, but we did have a lot of discussion around Easter break, and that's what the committee, you know, felt at the time was the best. That would be the only thing that wouldn't because we could move those two planning days in March that and that would go to Christmas. Um, 
I do think there's a chance that doing that we would get some other feedback because we had a lot of feedback about people wanting Good Friday. So if we move those two days from Easter, they would lose Good Friday. So I mean, I think that we would have, I think we could have some people happy, you know, one way and some people unhappy the other way. That is correct. Considering all those various ramifications. That is correct. And we, the committee did consider moving one of the days to February, and then we had a tremendous amount of discussion, and they decided no, they wanted to leave Easter that way. So we did, we did have that discussion. We didn't discuss the Christmas, but. Any other questions? Any other questions? Not what's the pleasure of the board. Do I hear any motions? I don't think she offered the opportunity, the option to not do anything. <laughs> <laughs>
membership of North High School Boards Insurance Trust. Uh, that will provide the, the cost of this litigation. Uh, the, the most important points that the school association has made is that this will draw away funds from uh, the traditional public schools. The uh, amount for this next year is $10 million. There was a fiscal note in the original legislation that indicated $50 million for the following year would be taken away. Uh, remind you just a couple of points that um, those children eligible for this to access this money through this authority that been, has been created uh, have to be enrolled in the public schools the previous semester. Uh, and so that would be uh, students who are either leaving the school district or students who re-enroll in an attempt to gain this voucher in the subsequent semester. Uh, this resolution has been, as I said, adopted by a number of school boards across the state. It was prepared uh, in part by the school board association, and so you have it before you. Uh, I'll be glad to answer questions that I can about the legislation. But your own, Ms. Miller is an officer in the School Board Association, and she has spoken on that, as have many other uh, leaders across the state about this legislation. If you've got any questions that I can have about this. Any questions about the board? So I'm sure Ms. Miller would be glad to answer. Mr. Chairman, I don't have a question, but I do want to state my opinion as, as we prepare to vote. I do urge the other members of the Board of Education to support the resolution to join with 16 other school systems in the lawsuit that has been filed by the School Board Association challenging the school voucher law. North Carolina General Assembly passed this law and it's going to siphon $10 million to provide private school vouchers. And the plan on that drain is to increase it to $50 million per year. The law requires the state to reduce funding in each district to fund this scheme. In effect, it's a tax on school districts to fund private schools. There have been substantial cuts to public education in Raleigh over the last five years when adjusted for inflation and enrollment. I cannot understand how a legislature can tell public school teachers that there's no money for raises, no money for master's degree, and not enough money for textbooks, but we're going to reduce funding even more to provide $10 million for private school vouchers. Now, that's not to say that I'm against school choice. I'm not. I don't believe any member of this Board of Education is against school choice. Parents have the right to homeschool their children. Parents have the right to send their children to private schools. I don't have any problem with that, but they should pay for those private choices. There's a lack of transparency in the private schools. Private schools are not required to use any curricular goals or guidelines. And in some states, private schools have even used textbooks that claim that dinosaurs and humans existed at the same time. There's no independent research that tells us that the information being presented is accurate. Private schools can exclude handicapped students or students with different religious views. The state is going to be giving out millions of dollars of taxpayers' money with virtually no oversight. And I believe it's a violation of the North Carolina Constitution to use public funds for non-public education. This legislature has not been kind to public education in 2013, but the school voucher scheme is the greatest insult of them all. I urge support for the resolution. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Anybody else? Yes, yes sir. Mr. I wholeheartedly agree with Mr. Harris. The time that public education doesn't have the money it needs, we're giving money to private schools that have no accountability to anyone how the money is spent. They can adopt by what students they want. There's no control over who gets the money. There's no control about the quality of the education that the students receive. There are some good private schools in North Carolina, but there are also an awful lot of very bad ones. And this bill is a way that I think would encourage an awful lot of very bad ones uh, to be opened up simply to reap the state money that would be available for those schools that would be started. I think it's uh, very much a, a, a important task for us to join in, in this effort to uh, fight this raid on the state uh, taxpayers. Thank you. Anybody else? I'd like to say that I am a member of uh, the Cleveland County Board of Education, and as a member of the Board of Education, it is a public school. And to uh, go for private uh, funds to go to uh, against that is a bit against what I'm here for. Anybody 
In addition to that, uh, there are other uh, education scholars outside of the public uh, school community that also uh, initiated legislation because of Accreditation visit 
information. I believe Dr. Auburn, you're going to tell us about that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the opportunity to share with board members information about the upcoming accreditation visit. On Cleveland County Schools' website, you'll find information about SAC's KC District Accreditation. You need to click on About Us, scroll down, and then click on SAC's KC District Accreditation. The first question on the website asks, what is accreditation? Accreditation is a voluntary method of quality assurance. It drives student performance and our continuous improvement process. Why district accreditation? Accreditation matters because our students deserve the highest level of educational excellence possible. Students and their parents will experience ease in transferring credits from one school to another, gain greater access to federal loans, scholarships, post-secondary education, and military programs that require students attend an accredited institution. And there are benefits from, from our district's commitment to raising student performance and accountability. On the website, you also see the five standards for quality and information about the Thanksgiving, the parent organization accreditation. Now, how did we get accreditation? was awarded initial accreditation in the fall of 2008. An external review team noted several strengths of the district as well as opportunities for improvement. We are currently scheduled for a continuing accreditation visit to occur February 2nd through the 5th. District accreditation requires commitment from the district's leadership and from the Board of Education. The board adopted policy 3020 that states, the Cleveland County Board of Education encourages its staff to work towards attaining and continuing accreditation of the school system by the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction and the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools. As board members, you are asked to participate in an interview with external review team members. You should have received a copy of the review team schedule. Please note that on Monday, February 3rd, at 11.30, 11 you are invited to have lunch with the review team members. Interviews with board members will take place at 12.15. Please note that you are divided into teams and also note the location of where the interviews will be conducted. Any questions at this time? Yes, it will be here at uh, Central Services, um, the Staff Development Center, Building C. The interviews will be held um, on this floor. Team A will have interviews in Conference Room 203. Team B, interviews will be held in Conference Room 207. And Team C, interviews will be held in uh, Conference Room 208. Lunch will be in the staff development room, so if you can, come for lunch, and then you'll come up for your interviews with your team. Yes, sir. I don't want to put it as a do with unnecessary pressure on you, but uh -huh. I'm just going to the principal said that I am expecting the same impeccable leadership that you exhibited the last time. It was a team effort, Mr. Hooker, and it, it, it's an experience. You and the team. I'm in the team. I know it takes a team. It takes, it takes all of us. It takes the district leadership and the commitment from our board of education. And I'm placing high expectation that we succeed again. We're looking forward to the visit. Any other questions? Any other events where we'll be expected to attend? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There is, Mr. Um, Chairman. Call board meeting on Wednesday the 5th uh, at, at 12 noon. That lets you go on the board in uh, 08. When we went through this before, we'll call the visiting committee will give us a initial report, giving us uh, initial commendations and recommendations uh, in a general type meeting. Uh, in about 30 45 minutes, and then we will have lunch with that group before they depart. So we ask that uh, you all plan on a call for a meeting on Wednesday, February 5th at 12 noon here in the board. Any other questions for Dr. Hoffman? If not, 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. On to the next item, which is a comprehensive annual financial report. I believe, Mr. Lee, you are going to give us Mr. Chairman, members of the board, you have the CAFR, uh, or the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, which we'll refer to as CAFR going forward. In your packets, uh, we have submitted this report to the Governmental Finance Officers Association for review. The GFOA is, a, is the uh, leading organization in so far as government, governmental financial reporting recognition. Our goal in submitting the, the report is to achieve the designation of Certificate of Excellence in Financial Reporting. The GFOA will review the statements by staff reviewers, and then they will send the reports out to other finance officers around the country for their review and feedback. Uh, the, the statements will not be reviewed anywhere within the jurisdiction where the reports uh, are generated from. The view, review will take up six months to complete. GFOA will either issue the certif Certificate of Excellence in Financial Reporting, along with uh, recommendations that they would like to see uh, presented in the report in years going forward, or they will deny the, the recognition and will give us a list of things that, uh, that could have been done better in presenting the report. Uh, before the end of the summer, we will hear back. It will probably take about six months for the report to, uh, to go through the review process. But hopefully, before the end of the summer, we'll report back to you what the status of the review turned out to be. If you look through the data, you, you're going to think, "Why well, did we just do this?" In a lot of cases, uh, you have seen a mother <coughs> that sent this report already in December when the auditors uh, presented their report on the uh, financial audit for the year ending June 30th. Uh, but sandwiched, this report is divided into three sections the introductory section, the financial statement section, and the statistical section, and the financial statements, which are the reports that you, you saw in December when they were the auditors uh, presented their report. It's sandwiched between those two sections primarily. The introductory section is a narrative letter that uh, uh, draws out a lot of uh, data about the economic condition of the county, about the accomplishments of the district about our long range government and about the organizational structure of the Board of Education. Uh, the final section is a statistical section and it will take a lot of the data that is within the financial statements and give you a 10 year comparison so that you, you can look at a long range trend the financial status of the system. It will also present a 10 year trend look at a lot of important county data, not county school data. That's uh, pretty much that in uh, a nutshell. I just want to let you know that, uh, that we have submitted it and that uh, we'll report back to you if and when uh, designation is presented to these statements. And I'd be more than happy to try to respond to any questions that you may have about this. Anybody have any questions? Mr. Chairman, I would like to comment that this has been something that um, I've had a goal, and I've talked about is at the time I've been here as superintendent. Uh, this, I think, is just one more piece of trying to be as transparent as we can be with the data that we have. Um, as, as all of you know, we've already been alluded to, and we've had some things in the past that um, we've really tried to address in the last few years of making sure that we're accountable on the financial side. We've put in new policies in place. We've done some things that, that we think have improved and strengthened our district. And this is just one more of those. Mr. Um, Lee and his staff, particularly Scott Alexander, our interim auditor, has been involved in this, and they have worked to, to, to gather this data and put it in this presentation. Uh, I'm anxious to hear what recommendations will come back uh, on this capital in the future so that we can improve on it. Many districts do it every year on an every other year basis, and so you know, I hope we'll be able to continue to do this. I just want to say uh, thank you. Mr. Lee and his folks for putting this together because it did take extra time for them to be able to do this. But I think it's important work. I think it's an important document that we put together. Um, and I think the feedback we'll get is important as well. Thank you. Anybody else? If not, Mr. Lee, I believe you have the next item also. Yes, sir. Units. We have three.
very noble units at Washington that we respectfully request that the board declare a surplus so that we can auction those uh, items off. These units are no longer uh, being used for uh, students. We, in fact, we just wouldn't put students in these units, and uh, we need to clean the campus up. Thank you. I think we can say that the group, those of us who went to Washington School today, lunch that those uh, uh, units are indeed not appropriate for our students. And my colleagues who were there agree. Agree. Uh, do we have any questions to ask Mr. Lee about this? If not, what's the pleasure to vote? Make a motion to, uh, to approve these level units as surplus. We have a second motion to go ahead and uh, clear these three mobile units for surplus. Any other discussion? <coughs> if not, I'll I got a question. Yes, sir. These units, will they move, be moved? Prior to them being sold, or that's part of the deal. If you buy them, your, it's your requirement to move it all. They'll have 60 days typically to move the units after they purchase them. We will not put these prior to them. Then they'll move those on the weekend, not on school. Yeah, they'll, they'll work that out for the school. Uh, yes, sir. How long will, they, will that be in process for, for that? Uh, that bid will be there. And what if somebody don't buy? If somebody doesn't buy those units, then that, that means that there's not a market for them. And, uh, then do we dispose of them in? Yes. And the answer to the question typically those auctions are going two weeks. Any other discussion? Two weeks. Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. On to our capital projects report. Uh, John Yarbrough. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, board members. I would like to highlight a few of our capital projects uh, for you. Uh, here at uh, TPA, the majority of the cameras have been installed, uh, still waiting on a few to be delivered. Uh, I know they're in the process of uh, updating, in the process of updating um, the servers as well as configuring the cameras. Uh, hope to have some live feeds at the end of this week. <coughs> Is that better, sir? You see a number of projects that deal with elementary schools in regard to pre-K classrooms. Um, this past July, NC Pre-K uh, uh, was, was uh, approved to uh, meet daycare licensing requirements. So we're in the process of uh, addressing some of these needs. Um, The uh, daycare licensure is different than K-12 licensure. So um, sort of highlight a few of those at Jefferson and East Elementary. Uh, we've replaced some windows to give us a second means of egress in those uh, classrooms. That really involves two classrooms at Jefferson and one at East. At Kaiser Elementary, uh, in their pre-K area, we've had to add some drywall to cover wood paneling and to add some uh, different uh, door hardware. That really involves one classroom. And at Graham, uh, we've really had to uh, uh, focus on our, our door hardware in two classrooms on that campus. Two sites that's required much more work is at Faustin Elementary and James Love Elementary. At Faustin, we've actually had to go in and uh, replace the ceiling, a wood ceiling with a uh, lay-in ceiling had to add drywall to cover wood structure, as well as to add uh, additional plumbing for hot water. And James Love is very similar in regard to adding drywall, plumbing, and the hardware issues. We uh, <coughs> still have some work to do at Marion and at Beth Ware. Do you have any questions with that? That's, uh, that's, that's turned into be a, a pretty big process for Ms. Beam and, and her staff and, working through these uh, licensing requirements. Any questions? Um, also on the report, 
report you can see that we're uh, replacing some uh, restroom partitions at Faustin Elementary, Graham Elementary, and James Love. We have a couple projects at uh, Burns High School, um, the electrical materials for the barn. And again, just to remind you, that is materials only. Our maintenance staff will actually be doing the labor at that facility. And then you see a domestic water line project there. Um, we've had a leak, a water leak, under the main slab there on the Freshman Academy, a two-story wing that uh, we haven't been able to identify. It's been a tremendous challenge. We've actually uh, drilled some holes in Terrazzo, actually dug up some uh, concrete in the mechanical areas, uh, and actually with the process of turning off valves and trying to identify this leak, actually created a window of at least one additional leak that we did prepare. So what we've done there at Burns High School is actually uh, isolated that under slab supply line and moved it to above the ceiling. Uh, this was a big job because that just it didn't involve the uh, main supply line, but it involved every branch off and that line actually feeds all the fixtures on that two-story area. Uh, but the good news is that we were able to get that completed uh, uh, over Christmas. So uh, glad to get that one behind us. Um, also occasionally you see we replace those uh, pump motors at the uh, water treatment facility. Um, again, that's an important aspect uh, not only for the system to run, but to run properly so that we can meet those, uh, those uh, requirements up there. Kings Mountain High School, you can see a curtain replacement, curtain replacements in the auditorium. This basically includes all their stage curtains and some rigging and, and track uh, system there in that auditorium. I do want to address a proposed project at Kings Mountain High School. It is their softball dressing facility. Um, Mr. Chair, I'd like to just give a brief history on this project. Back in 2009, we had a uh, compliance review team from Title IX to come on uh, come to Cleveland County Schools and assess our four high schools. And at that time, they identified some non-compliance issues. Um, we have actually completed the projects that address those issues at Burns High School, Crest High School, and Shelby High School. Uh, at that time, uh, was when the uh, community group, the Touchdown Club at Kings Mountain, was planning to build a new field house. Kings Mountain High School. We shared that with Mr. Rines at that time and actually even talked about adding the softball facility to that uh, building. Uh, didn't approve that plan. So uh, we did uh, ask Mr. Rines to, to, uh, for a delay of, uh, in our timeline so we could see if that facility actually materialized. And it has. And I think we discussed that in our last meeting. You saw some, some of the progress of, that they've made with that facility. So with that facility, we'll be able to locate our baseball team and the uh, men's track in the spring in that facility. And then that will allow us to use the old field house for girls soccer and girls track in the spring, just like we did at Burns High and Crest Mill, if you remember back to those projects. So that leaves a standalone softball dressing facility at Keys by High School. I have, uh, provided you a copy of that floor plan. Um, that plan is identical to the facility that we constructed at uh, Shelby Middle School that helped us meet that compliance issue at Shelby High with an addition of a 12-foot storage area on one side of that facility that you can see that's just an open storage area. Uh, that sort of goes along with the strategies we've used at the other buildings that we have built during this process of trying to add some additional storage at those athletic fields. Uh, that's just a, a tremendous need at our schools. Um, hope to have those plans ready to go out for bid early February, and then we will uh, communicate that uh, once we get those bids in. And I also would add that there will be uh, small renovations into the current field house to make it uh, uh, meet the needs for our uh, female student athletes uh, there uh, for those springtime sports. And uh, I have one last item just to inform you. Uh, 
a few meetings back, we actually declared the, uh, the house on the adjoining property at West and the house at the adjoining property at Grover Surplus. We have uh, advertised those and have had absolutely no interest in purchasing the house only on those two. So we plan now to work with our local uh, fire departments to, to burn those, those facilities and move, move forward and clean off those, those lots. Questions? Yes. Uh, on the uh, the project at Kings Mountain, I, I do not have anything against that, but do we not have some needs at North Shelby School that is very important that those children need a lunch, they need a lunchroom. I've been there. I've seen them. They're the most precious kids that we got in this county. And does, does us as a county, shouldn't we put a little bit of that ahead? Because they've been a need in that for several years. I would, I would agree with you, Mr. Blanton. The uh, North Shelby project, which is our top priority on our strategic planning uh, report, I agree with that. Uh, the Title IX uh, review and that compliance, uh, those compliance issues were. Uh, really a, uh, a surprise for us. It was something that uh, the federal government came in and, uh, and identified those areas and uh, really don't have a, a lot of option there in regard to addressing those needs. So we don't have no more time. In other words, they're saying we have to do that thing. Yes, sir. Uh, the original time frame, Dr. Fisher, hit me up that. 2012 was our original, original completion timeline, but we did talk with Mr. Rhines, and uh, I can say with Dr. Fisher's leadership, had a great relationship, and they understood since we had a potential facility being built on our campus that would impact this, they did allow us to, uh, uh, the time to, to see if that uh, new field house on the campus of Kings Mountain High School uh, materialized, so that would impact on what we would need to do to meet our non-compliance issues. So, uh, you know, I agree with Mr. Blanton on the, the needs of North Shelby, but when this process came along, uh, you know, it, was, it was a, uh, a review and an and a expectation that uh, we had not budgeted for. Mr. Gilbert, I want to make sure I understand you correctly. Did you say in the funding for the Keith Mountain softball dressing facility that Touchdown Club is helping to fund that, or is not? Uh, no, sir. Uh, Mr. Harris, when that process started, we went to Mr. Ryan's to see if we could just include the softball dressing. We knew that that was a non-compliance issue that we had to address. And we went to Mr. Ryan's to see if we could combine that in that facility. It's too far from our softball field. And the man was uh, denied. Well, I heard the discussion I talked about the same that touchdown club money is used for this. No, no, no. You know, again, looking at that time, the partner, that uh, even though their project and their facility will benefit us so that we will have a place for boys baseball to dress because they're currently dressing in an area that's going to become a female uh, field, field house for spring sports. Mr. Yarbrough, so I'm assuming that uh, what you just said, I just want to make clarification, the old field house that you will renovate for soccer and track is not going to be suitable for softball because it is too far from the softball facility. We are, uh, that's a good point, uh, Ms. Falls. We did uh, address that and that did not meet that compliance issue. So this field facility will be near the softball field, which is nowhere near these other two facilities. That's true. That was one of our non-compliance issues. And this is strictly a state issue that has to be done. It's a, that's a federal, federal, federal issue. Federal. Yes, sir. Any other comments? Questions? Thanks, sir. Thank you, Mr. Next item concerns the student transfer request, which you all seen uh, in the agenda package. What's the pleasure of the board? Make a motion to approve the transfers as presented. Second. Move and second. 
approve the student transfer request as recommended by the superintendent. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. On to announcements, Dr. Boyles. I'll just remind you of two upcoming events. There will be others that we'll bring to you as the spring moves forward. But I hope you have April 8th, the Teaching Excellence Awards Program. And on May 1st, our Senior Scholars Bank. We hope you have all those on your calendar and reserving those dates. Those are the two important events that we'd like our board to be at if you're, if you're available. And so April 8th and May 1st. That's all. Do you have any good news? I do have one matter of good news. Um, just because this came to you earlier uh, at a prior meeting, you had a, a representative from the American Legion here about the oratorical contest a few months ago. And I'm pleased to report that uh, they have gone through that process. And uh, Jacob Bell, Shelby High School, is the first place winner. And so he will advance to the district competition on January 25th. And so that we had a good uh, representation at that contest uh, this time. I'll say that Dr. Ware is doing a good job of trying to make sure that we're participating in those kinds of events and things like uh, governor school and uh, those kinds of things that bring recognition to our students and allow them other opportunities. And so she's really involved in that. And so Jacob will represent us in that district competition. That's all. Thank you, Dr. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. And I do think it's noteworthy that you note that now you once again have a member of the State Board of Education among your ranks. Uh, Mr. Hooker did start, I believe, last week as uh, the newest uh, board, State Board member uh, representing the North Carolina School Board Association. The Chair will now entertain a motion to go into executive session uh, for the discussion of this consultation with an attorney and personnel uh, issue or issues pursuant to Appropriate general statutes. Will I hear such a motion? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. We've been in executive session. I want to read, we've adjourned that, and I want to reconvene our uh, open session. And there be no business having been, no action having been taken at the executive session, and I'm open to the pleasure of the board. Make a motion we adjourn. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you all.